Hey folks, it's Swank Ivy with another Letters to an Asexual. This is number... Mm, 73? 73. Alright, so uh, before I get into my letter today, just a little bit of housekeeping. Um, I'm a little cold, so if you see me pulling this blanket around me, I'm just being a wimp. It's not that cold in here, but I get cold really easily. Um, so... Anyway, uh, my last video was a live stream, which some of y'all were in attendance, and that was really cool. It was a fun experience. We did it for Asexual Awareness Week, and I just uh, talked about some stuff with uh, asexuality in the media, my own personal experiences, and it was fun having the little chat window on the side there um, where people were chiming in, and some of them were asking questions and suggesting things for me to talk about. Uh, as per usual, I ended up talking a little bit about cartoons when prompted. It wasn't my idea, but uh, I showed some of my drawings and stuff. I ended up um, talking about this project that I've been wanting to do that I've mentioned a couple of times, um, where I've been wanting to start a podcast with someone who was unspoiled about my favorite show, Steven Universe, and do like a newbie veteran podcast with someone. And it turned out the perfect person was in that chat. My my friend uh, Daria was there, and we have started this podcast. We have now recorded episodes up uh, from the pilot all the way to episode six as of this conversation, but we only released one. And I would love for y'all to subscribe to that if you're like into the show or you want to hear us talk about this cartoon, or maybe if you haven't seen it and you want to watch along with us, that is possible. Um, so, it's a great show for any of y'all who haven't figured out from my incessant yammering about it that I think it's amazing. But anyway, the channel will be linked in my, my info box associated with this video, and you, uh, can look up online. It's called Not So Giant Women, <laughs> which is a reference to something in the show that will come up pretty soon, uh, from where we are. So if you look for Not So Giant Women on YouTube, and we also have just an audio-only version of it. Um, so I'm just mentioning that at the beginning of this video because the actual subject matter for Letters, of, letters to an Asexual 73 is going to get pretty long, and unfortunately it's bouncing off of some of the comments on a previous video in Letters 72. I had some kind of trollish comments, um based on some of the stuff they said I had to wonder if I had been linked somewhere from you know some jerks talking about my video um, because I just got several commenters that were all saying the same kind of thing and uh, some of them could have been sock puppets of the other but I'm not gonna speculate too much about that it seemed like at least two different people were doing it um, but it could have been more, uh, and I'll just, I'll share with you the comments, and, um, I'll try to do it in sort of an abbreviated way, and then I'm actually just gonna kind of read you a prepared statement rather than talking off the cuff, because I know I will go in circles just talking about how indignant I am about the, how annoyed I got about these people's perspective. The video in question, 72, was about a message that I received on OkCupid from a man um, who told me I had unreasonable expectations for being on that site and expecting to find friendships. And my first commenter was basically agreeing with that person, basically saying, uh, why are you on that site? And a conversation ensued. And uh, I will do my best to tie in some thoughts on th that actually have something to do with asexuality rather than just general annoyance trying to live in the world and actually value your friendships which I know is a hot button issue just by itself for many people including many asexual people um, so why don't I go ahead and start with just their comments first uh, I got a comment from one fella who said, a guy sent you a message on OkCupid. You are on OkCupid. Why? 
Uh, and I didn't see that for like a week, but I finally answered him and I said, they're a matching site that very specifically identifies options for friendship matches through the site, and I'm very explicit in my profile and settings to say so. It's been successfully connecting me to wonderful friendships for almost 15 years. So this fellow responds and says, sure, but I think whatever the site claims it is, what it actually is, is a dating site for desperate men who want romance and sex. It isn't really going to be a site for you to get what you are looking for. And then he responds again with a follow-up and says, you know, if you want a non-sexual relationship, just hang with your girlfriends. Look for girlfriends. Once romance and sex is out of the picture, dating becomes obsolete. Sex and romance is the end goal to dating. And then some other troll jerk comes in and says, Swank Ivy, stop using men. Rescue a dog or adopt some hungry African kid. Build a table. Do something productive. Anything. And then that same trollish person responded again. And, you know, he's following up. He's continuing to pelt my comment field. And he goes, do guys actually respond to your profile, even with your face showing? <laughs> um, and another guy who had a very similar username, weirdly, it, it's all like MRA comments. Um, these guys have sort of MRA handles, surprise. And one says to the other, I don't think it's that bad. Guys who meet her become asexuals themselves. Uh, so I responded to the first person and I said, it's pretty telling that you assume the people I'm meeting there aren't girls. I meet new people all the time from there. Many of them are not men. It's also really confusing that you think relationships with girls on the site would automatically be non-sexual if they were between two girls, but not between a girl and a guy. I'm looking for any kind of friendship that's mutually satisfying. I'm not twisting anyone's arm into being friends with me. When they like what I have to say, great. If we're not compatible, I don't begrudge them anything. I also don't go to their profile where they're saying they just want sex and pester them for friendship. So expecting the same courtesy seems fair. And then I also said, you're ignoring that I have for years found friends on the site who wanted what I did. It's working for me. It seems really bizarre that my desires to match with similar people are being framed here as if I can't possibly be there to meet my own needs. That I'm only there to use people, which if they want a relationship I don't want, it's obvious and I don't meet them. It's super strange to see people framing my reasonable interest in human connection that I like as a means of denying others theirs. Uh, so the slightly more reasonable person said, okay, so you go to a dating site to find friends and you found some success. You have no friends where you are? And I said, it's not just a dating site. And you keep repeating that misconception as if I'm the absurd one for being there with unreasonable expectations. It is no more reasonable to say, you shouldn't be there for friends, than it would be to say, you shouldn't be there for sex if you're not also there for dating. It's a dating site. The creators of the site built these options in for many kinds of matches. It should be fine for everyone if they just take a little time to respectfully approach people who want what they want. I respect that some people use it for hookups. I also don't message them asking for friendship. It's fair. Basic human relationships require respect of each other's needs. I have no problem with respecting theirs. If I'm so utterly useless to someone, all he needs to do is leave me alone and proposition someone who is there for the same reason he is. I do indeed have many friends where I am. It seems weird to frame friendship like I only need a certain number of them and then I shouldn't want to connect with anyone else who might be similar to me. Some of the people I talk to end up as just pen pals, or editing partners, or people who chat with me on the phone, or people who connect through shared content. Some happen to be in the same area and are close enough for one-on-one -on -one hangouts and event attendance together to be possible. The fact that you keep trying to make my reasonable interest in broad human connection into something baffling and unreasonable, and probably underhanded in some way, makes me think you don't actually want to converse about this. It all has a flavor of you thinking I'm trying to get away with something, misrepresent myself, even though I'm clear as day on my profile, or farm content from unsuspecting horny people who can't be expected to respect what a woman specifies wanting, because penises, I guess. 
you can let me know if I'm wrong here and you actually do want to have a neutral conversation about this, but so far you're not really creating an environment conducive to actually finding out what my life and relationships are about. It's largely been leading questions fueled by assumptions, and none of them are remotely relevant to what my experience actually is. I don't enjoy being chased around in circles by people who think they know what I'm really doing when I'm just here living my life and I don't int intend to entertain accusatory conversations indefinitely. Just as an aside also, the because penises I guess is a reference to um, quite a few dudes who have claimed that they biologically can't help it because they have a penis and it's like I know a lot of people with penises who do not act like that, thank you very much. So. Just so you know, I'm not automatically like equating those things together personally. Um, anyway, so then another person mysteriously comes back and replies and says, Okay, Cupid is a dating site. It uses the Greek god Eros in its name for a reason. So yes, we do think you're fishing for reactions. And I say, so. You ignore my claim that I find friends there, ignore that the site built in asexual and other queer orientations in for people like me, ignore that the site built in the friendship category and allows people to sign up even if they only select that category, and ignore that my profile explicitly lays out my intent. Still, the poor men who refuse to read what I want and refuse to read my profile and refuse to respect that I have my own needs are the victims here, and my reasonable and effective presence on the only dating site that allows those options is actually all about enticing people to harass me on purpose. Translation, I'm asking for it just by being there. No matter how explicitly and boldly and often I state I am not here for any of the other categories, please respect that I only have the friendship box checked for a reason. It's right there, and you have to intentionally ignore the stated categories that are there for finding what you're actually here for. Nope, it's all a lie, and I'm enjoying getting harassed, and I'm somehow using dudes I'm not in any way tricking into messaging me and harassing me. My existence in the world is actually all about denying sex to men, and who have every right to simply expect it from any woman they happen to come across on a site. All of these arguments also apply to lesbians, incidentally, and lesbians are also always getting hit on by men, even when they say, here for women only, and specifically say, no men, I don't date men, in their profiles. But if a man sees her, she's wrong! She's wrong for being there and making him want her. How dare he have to read what she wants and respect that he's not it. And um, some other comments were coming in around the same time. One of the really trolly guys said, how can you be queer but asexual at the same time? And I pretended like I actually thought he was asking a real question, because you can, you can smell the troll on these people anyway. But I responded and I said, that's pretty basic for two reasons. One, queer can be anyone who isn't straight and cis, and asexual people generally aren't heterosexual. And two, many aces are same-sex attracted romantically and or not cisgender, though it's not automatic. So those folks can easily be understand as asexual and queer. And the jerk replied, Aces? I have no idea what the fuck you just said. Is this some sort of special speak? And weirdly, the person that was arguing with me earlier who sounded the most reasonable told that person, Don't be rude. Aces means asexuals. And the troll replied, Fuck you too! And then he goes, Thanks though. These guys crack me up. And uh, then one of the other MRA dudes said, Romance is just a religified term for sexually att attracted with chains attached. And then he also says, What exactly do you want from these men on dating sites? If you're asexual, can't you just get a German Shepherd or something? German shepherds, shepherds like to have their faces vacuumed. I don't know what he's going for there. But I replied and I said, It's just real sad that you're driven to put people down because you don't understand them. Many people are happy to help you understand, but you're not acting like you want that. You keep saying stuff that makes it clear you have no idea what our experience is like, but you want to snot at it and laugh at it and mock it and make it obvious that you personally don't approve. It's not the kind of thing that makes you look discerning or educated, but it's a shame you can't just default to kindness. Life is already so hard without people intentionally making things hostile like you are here. We really don't need any more from you here. And I blocked that person. Um, 
and uh, the more reasonable person also had written this. Um, he said, I didn't realize until YouTube how many people are asexual. It's, a good, it's good to start talking about this openly. That being said, I do agree with one of the other guys up earlier in the thread. He says that going to a dating site for male company is disrespectful to the men on that dating site. You know they aren't there for non-sexual encounters. And I said, you haven't listened to the basics of what I said about OkCupid. If you sign up there, they make it absolutely clear that you can sign up for any of their four categories. Friendship, long-term dating, short-term dating, or sexual encounters. Any or all are allowed. I am explicitly listing only friendships. Explicitly call attention to it in my profile. Chose asexual as my sexual orientation, which is an option, which, like friendship, is built into the system by the people who made the site, and most importantly, have successfully been using it for 15 years to meet other people who are looking for friends. I would really appreciate it if people would stop trying to frame me as disingenuous for pursuing my own needs and interests in an environment made explicitly to include people like me on the grounds that a person shouldn't have to read anything in my profile before simply assuming I'm there for the same reason they are. The fact that OkCupid is explicitly inclusive of asexual people and friendship relationships is the reason I am there and not present on any other site that is exclusively for, for dating. And this guy says, well, do you expect any of these prospective friends to wine and dine you? I said, I don't understand the thrust of this question. I'm assuming you have friends, right? Do you expect your friends to wine and dine you? He says, no. That's why if you do, it isn't friends you're looking for. I doubt these men are looking for friends through this site. Are they aces like you? And I said, see how easily you answered no to that question? See how absurd it seems to you that anyone would expect to be wined and dined as part of a friendship? You're talking to me as if you already know the answer. And that's the problem. I have never, literally never once in my entire life, met someone from OpKCupid and expected them to take me out for a nice time and pay for everything we did. That's because friendship is exactly what it sounds like. Depending on the relationship, sometimes these friendships involve taking turns paying for entertainment or food, or just paying for our own. Or more often, we do stuff that doesn't require paying for anything. Are you talking to me like this because you believe I am exclusively meeting men on OkCupid? I'm not. Meeting them in situations indistinguishable from dating? I'm not and skipping away giddily after they spend money on me, even though I don't have sex with them after? It just seems like you're approaching this whole conversation as if you know how it goes. Even though in my 15 years of successfully finding friends of all genders through that site, none, not literally one, have ended in some guy disappointed and feeling led astray that he thought he would buy my dinner and get sex, only to be disappointed by me using my feminine wiles to trick free drinks out of them with no return. That does not describe my relationships. That does not describe my desires. If you want to have a conversation about this, we can. But it has to be without you assuming you know something you do not know. He says, Certainly you must see how it's suspicious that you would use a dating site to find friends when there are more reliable social media for this. What happened to your friends in real life? Did they move away? Did you grow apart? <laughs> And finally, I just said this, suspicious? Maybe you should ask yourself how suspicious it looks when you repeatedly reuse phrasing about a dating site to frame me as unreasonable when I've debunked how you framed it. And now you seem to not understand how human relationships work as well, demonstrating this by assuming if I'm interested in getting messages from similar people, I must have lost all my local friends, or don't use other social media to connect that way too. It's just not that complicated or weird, and people who are there for the same reason I am are not confused at all, like you seem to be, over a simple concept. That was the end of the conversation because I finally did block him. Um, and like I've said in other videos about my status on blocking. I used to leave these conversations open um, almost indefinitely, just kind of feeling like it was on the level of censorship or something, or silencing dissenters if I block people. I don't feel that way anymore, uh, partly because 
you smell the troll on them so early and then they just want to have conversations at you. They want to keep putting you in a box that doesn't describe anything you're saying. Everything I'm doing and saying does not fit what he's describing, but he's still talking to me like that is what I'm saying. And that's where it stops being a conversation. I feel no obligation to have these conversations anymore. I just don't have the time. And I don't, I'm not, get, I'm not getting anything out of it. And he's certainly not getting anything out of it. Um, if he's not going to listen. If he had been willing to listen, I would have been glad to explain. So, uh, this is my write-up for what came after. It is, uh, shall we say comprehensive, but I'm going to make some points in it that I felt like if I tried to make them just from, uh, memory, I would just get angry and say the same thing a lot. So, um, here goes. <laughs> what I want to say to all this. So the conversations are already pretty illuminating regarding what's going on here, but let me just elaborate on this. I want to emphasize that I have no interest in talking to these trolls, and that's why I blocked all of these accounts. As soon as they either said something abusive or ignored a point I made in favor of making another baseless accusation about my suspected behavior. Let me be clear that I don't expect to actually convince people like them that I go to OkCupid to enjoy the results of the fairly sophisticated matching algorithm in my friendships. I don't actually expect to be heard by people who center men's sexual satisfaction in every conversation, or people who accuse me of deception with zero evidence because that sort of thing fits their lying females agenda. I want to talk to the people who are here to learn. I want to frame the issue for reasonable people who want to understand what aromantic asexual people might need in terms of support in their relationships. And I want them to understand the roadblocks we encounter and why reactions like this to us just living our lives are a major problem for certain marginalized people. If we can't just exist in spaces that are literally created to be customizable for our specific needs without being belittled for hurting people who have sexual needs by not being available to them, that is a very dangerous mindset, and it's one of many. Of, it's one many of us have to do a great deal of work to overcome. After all, this entitlement to sex and this insistence that others should be able to expect it from anyone they desire it from has ruined many of our relationships, especially if we're affected by pressure to find fulfillment through romantic relationships that necessarily lead to sex and are threatened with abandonment, loneliness, and abuse by people who think there's only one means to access fulfillment. As a relationship participant, any kind of relationship participant, including friendship, we do have the right to have our needs as absolutely equally considered as the needs of more typical people. And when it comes to my perspective, I've stated painfully clearly that if this is unacceptable to them, then I am happy to not have a relationship. I'm not forcing you to be in a friendship with me if you're not satisfied with that. And furthermore, it's immediately apparent to me if friendship is synonymous with disappointment when you interact with me. I'm not having trouble finding people who do want what I want at all. I just also find these assholes. So, let's see. One of these guys said, you should be looking for girlfriends. Hang out with your girlfriends. Like, okay, first of all, it's weird to assume I'm only there for male company because I have met many women and non-binary people from OkCupid, thank you. I should be looking for girls? Oh, you mean these girls I found there and met? Bizarre how you were so sure I only meet men there and I guess steal their money. <laughs> and I don't think... And don't think I don't see you showing your ass when you use girls as synonymous with people who aren't sexually attracted to you, therefore friendship is possible. Because some of the women I met were lesbians, or otherwise same-sex attracted people, who were also in the market for friendships as well, and somehow managed to not demand to fuck me. Don't worry though, I know you don't actually think about queer women on the site either. Though, I'll cover some really unfortunate stuff about entitled dudes' attitude toward them later. I assure you that I also meet women, and they are all for friendships, even though some of them like women romantically. Your assumption that I don't do this tells me loads about your perspective. 
but also, are you implying that I should only look for women friends on OkCupid because men are incapable of entering friendships with women, categorically? That they won't have a choice but to demand sex and romance even when they know I'm only there for friends? Sounds to me like you have a terrible opinion of men and believe they're all the same. And of course, conveniently, they all feel and believe exactly as you do about friendship, even though my male friendships don't fall into your pa pattern. Of course, I guess your answer would probably involve telling me I'm naive to believe these men are actually my friends, and that they're all privately seething about not being able to fuck me, while I naively believe I genuinely understand them. Hence, you are able to put words in their mouths and thoughts in their heads that contradict my experiences knowing them as people. And you're able to determine what they're thinking simply by virtue of the very most important aspect of their entire lives, their male. I've always thought they're individual people, capable of deciding whether they want a friendship with me on terms that make sense to both of us, and that they have the self-control to not helplessly whip their dick out on every woman they have a friendship with, even when they know for a fact she's not attracted to men. If they know this is too much to ask of them, I trust that they can simply not try to be my friend. Especially if they stand up, if they stand to end up disappointed because they were lying about their intentions in the first place. <laughs> I'm not unclear in the least on my profile about what I'm there for. It's on them if they deliberately ignore the categories selected, my orientation, and the paragraphs crafted to discuss mutually satisfying relationships. Me, that's not how I enter any relationship with expectations and focus only on my own needs and just kind of plopping myself on them with requirements they never wanted to meet. The profiles are there to help us understand what each other are there for. If your excuse for these dudes is they shouldn't have to consider your perspective or read about you in the slightest, their job is only to like your profile picture and expect you to cater to their desperation, then all I can say is I'm insulted on behalf of all the dudes I'm friends with who are not like that at all. It continues to baffle me that looking for relationships that benefit me is considered so impossible by these people. All they see is men's desires and men's needs, as if just because they're a bunch of misogynists who demand that men and men's needs at the expense of women are centered in absolutely everything, that means I see the world that way too, and therefore every single thing I do is a reaction to men, or an attempt to get some specific response from men. Like, I ain't worried about you. I wasn't thinking about you until you started wailing that I'm selfish for not wanting what you want. How come I don't get to say that to you? Do you know how many times I've jammed myself into someone's inbox and berated them for not being open to non-sexual friendship? Zero. And no, it's not because really the place is only for sex and romance and they can therefore do it to me while I can't do it to them. Just existing there is specifically called out by one of these dudes as an attempt to get harassed on purpose so I can have food for my videos. That's, I don't know, that's so yikes. Let, that me meeting my own needs in a place that's designed for me to do that is still interpreted as denying them sex and victimizing them. It's all about them. Seriously, I'm just gobsmacked how they sit there and head nod each other about how selfish I am to look for basic human connection in friendships online. I said over and over again in this conversation that I was making friends with people of all genders and that not a single one of them had ended when a man was disappointed I wouldn't fuck him. Not a single one involved a man being swindled out of wine and dine money or tricked into providing emotional support he only wanted to provide if it would result in sex. And the fact that that guy talked to me as if we both know I expect them to wine and dine me is very revealing, revi revealing as, regarding his mindset, huh? Any idea how bizarre that sounds if you accuse someone who really does want friends of extorting said friends into whining and dining her? Like, I have never in my life proposed or accepted a friendship with someone and then expected the next thing we did to involve them treating me to an expensive night out. But they think this shit is happening. This is not my experience on the site, and furthermore, plenty of other people are using the site the way I am. They're the ones I'm successfully making friends with. We're all there for different reasons. That's what the site supports. It isn't set up to have one real reason for using it and then a bunch of loopholes for people to abuse it. It's set up for different kinds of people to find different kinds of relationships because that's what people wanted in a sophisticated matching site. 
and the fact that one of them kept sidestepping what I said to ask why I'm not doing other things to make friends instead, or suggesting I must have no friends now if I'm doing this. What a weird, out-of-touch load of bull. Who? Swank Ivy, what happened to your friends? Did they leave you? Did they move on? Boo -hoo -hoo -hoo. Are you lonely? Jesus. Do people just get a pre-approved number of friends and then say, well, I have enough until one of them drops the position, so no more friendships for me. Like, as a person with many, many friends, that is not how friendship works. I'm not looking for these friendships because I'm lonely or have a vacant space. I'm doing it because I enjoy connecting with people over similar perspectives and interests, and that's not fucking weird. It's weird to treat friendships like job openings is what I think. But I guess if you're not discriminating at all regarding who is attached to the vagina you covet, you would devalue the idea of individual variation and what each new person can do to enrich another person's life. If they're all just a bunch of holes to fuck for you, I guess it might seem weird if we're over here treating each other like we're all people with complex emotions and rich lives to share and stuff. Okay, Cupid is actually really great for friendships specifically because it's so malleable. Any person of any gender interested in any kind of relationship can use it for what they want. In fact, people who are married can use it to connect with friends, and there's a special switch you can throw if you're open to non-monogamy with someone who's not single or might want an open relationship or whatever else. I guess these kind of guys would also have a shit fit if they wanted a lady all to themselves and some chick they found was already involved with other partners too and won't give up their existing partners for them. Dude, it's not what you want. Move on instead of raging at her. I'm not interested in coddling people who cry fucking rivers, demanding that men not have to think about what other people want, because they're there for dating and sex on their terms, and it should just be understood that I should remove myself from their sight if I'm not going to make myself useful by fucking them. Did you ever think that maybe you insist the site's only for dating because that's the only reason you ever seek out other people? That you can't imagine trying to forge human connection unless it's a lady you want to have sex with? So you figure you're allowed to assume that's what everyone else is there to do too, and those of us who say otherwise are existing in this space simply to mislead you and hurt you. You! 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 Yo, selfish dude, my profile is clear about how we're not a match. That means you're not what I want either. I'm not chasing you down and then asking you to buy me wine and dinner and then gleefully withholding sex. I have never had that misconception go past a first message from them to me. If I find someone on there who wants what I want, which includes a huge variety of ways we could match interests, a friend is made. Just like any other relationship, sometimes they're short exchanges, and sometimes they develop into relationships that last years or a lifetime. I'm still friends with a huge group of people I met through OkCupid in 2009. There are new people joining all the time, and if they're interested in friendships too, sometimes we find each other. It's just so goddamn wild that this guy tried to spin my clearly declared interest in friendship as an underhanded tactic to disappoint and trick men. Many, many men. That's all that's important. My decade and a half of success making friends with other people who completely understand what I'm there for couldn't possibly be my real reason for existing in a space. Let's talk about how explicit the site is about including people like me who want what I want and nothing more. The site built these preferences in for us. Why doesn't it make sense to people like this that I would gravitate toward a site with queer options and a friendship category? Where I will happily find people who want what I want and have been doing so successfully, as well as having to deal with people who misinterpret my presence on the site. If I mainly wanted to trick and disappoint dudes, I think I'd have more success doing that if I hid my intentions and put my profile on sites that only support dating or hookups, like eHarmony or Tinder. But guess who's never done that? Yep! Me wanting to pursue my own needs and desires makes perfect sense as a motivating factor to join a site that specifically supports what mine happen to be, right? I don't care if someone who won't even read my profile and isn't concerned with what, my, what I want in the slightest might trip over my picture and rage that he'll never see my boobs. I'm not here for him. And if his shitty entitlement helps me teach an occasional les lesson to the world of people who want to understand how compulsory sexuality affects asexual people, as well as plenty of other people who have been pursued this way, I will happily use it for that. It's just pretty shitty of this guy to twist my motivations like that and graft an agenda onto me. One that's designed to hammer the message home that I don't deserve to have needs. 
I don't deserve to prioritize myself in my relationships. I don't deserve to consider myself as important as any random man who propositions me. I don't deserve to exist a, as a person with different needs in a public space if I'm wasting other people's time by daring to not be available for what they want. I am expected to view myself as secondary, as submissive, as beholden to the expectations of randos who sign up for the site's admittedly most popular purpose. Obviously, I recognize that most people are there for dating and expect that dating to sooner or later lead to sex. But saying most people use it for that as a way of saying I shouldn't be there using features the way they were designed is like saying the road is for cars, so pedestrians are fucking everyone else over when they use crosswalks that were painted there for them. But roads are for driving! If you're walking in a spot that was designated for you, you're still misusing the road. And it's not fair to expect me to look for you, stop for you, or treat you like you're having a different experience even though you are. Hey, it should be fair game for me to mow you down in a crosswalk, or at least gun the motor and harass you a little, to scare you, for having the gall to be in my fucking street that's for cars. Come on. It's just not that hard to look into each person, as if they are, you know, a person or something, and figure out if you're compatible with them, considering a host of factors. Even if I was there to date and or have sex, I would expect my potential mates to read what I want and still accept that some pairings are incompatible. Insisting that my presence on the site automatically signals sexual and romantic availability to literally anyone who desires me is ludicrous. Anyone has the option of avoiding people and relationship types they are not there for. It's ridiculous to frame the situation like dudes simply can't be expected to treat human relationships as if they involve other humans with their own wants and needs. You don't get to just browse us like a rack of Barbie dolls and pick the one who's going home with you. Nor do you get to rant and rave if they say, I'm not available to be chosen by you, or I'm not available to be chosen for that purpose, or even I already chose someone else for that purpose, but I'm open to other options. Okay, so let's talk about that. There are four categories on the sites currently. There are friendships, long-term dating, short-term dating, and casual encounters. You can check all of these, or some, or just one. And guess what? I have yet to ever have any trollish asshat pop onto my videos, also claiming people shouldn't be allowed to just click casual encounters, because that's not dating either. But, 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 sex is expected. Yeah, I know, okay. You have this really specific and antiquated idea of what a relationship should guarantee you. But if we just assume from here that, yeah, most people who are looking for romance also want sex, you're still not addressing my main point. People can sign up for just sex, even though it's a dating site. They can sign up for sex with neither dating option checked. And they don't get run off the site or shamed by people like me. Guess why? Because I respect that the site engineers made that category available for that kind of relationship. And if someone states that they're only there for that kind of relationship, I would never message them assuming they would like a friendship. They said otherwise. I trust them to describe what they want, and I don't barge in declaring myself an exception because goddammit I deserve friendship with that person or something. It just doesn't happen. Because a relationship, whatever it turns out to be, is a mutual thing. It's based on mutual respect and mutual fulfillment of needs. Friendship is theoretically a part of a good romantic relationship as well, just like the sex option is for most. So why is it that people who only have the sex option clicked aren't portrayed like they're betraying the site's known purpose, while having only the friendship option clicked inspires this asinine outcry? Nah, don't answer that question. I know why. Part of what I want to do with my asexuality outreach is make it clear that our interests are not marginal and are not to be understood as unreasonable. In a two-person relationship, we're half the relationship. We need to stop framing these partnerships as if the asexual person has unreasonable needs and can't be expected to search for relationships that meet their needs. No, instead, people like this believe they should be expected to experience shame upon shame for years until they accept that they are wrong and must provide sex to people if they have any other interpersonal needs that would preferably be filled by another person. And they should be taught that when women prioritize their own needs, it's tantamount to attacking men who want to fuck them. Love shouldn't have to hurt. 
there's always compromise, but this can go so far beyond because of compulsory sexuality. Asexual people have historically been subjected to attitudes about sex that abuse them into accepting that the other person's sex drive determines how often they have sex, and that they are required to submit to this if they want any kind of lasting intimacy with anyone. If one person ideally needs a person they can have sex with three times a week, and the other person ideally needs someone who wants sex less or not at all, the less sexual person should feel empowered to look for someone who matches their desires or negotiates a workable compromise. What we actually get, more often than not, is the less sexual partner being belittled and shamed into accepting that this is their problem alone, and that they don't properly love their partner if they don't express it with sex, and that they do not deserve to speak about their intimacy needs, because it is only expressed as a denial of the partner's needs, or a torturous withholding of something the more sexual partner deserves simply by right. This isn't to say that highly sexual people, or people who need sex to be part of their intimate life, should accept a celibate life if their partner is non-sex desiring. This is to say they should have an equal, not superior, level of access to, their, to satisfaction of their needs compared to their partner. And if they cannot find something that works, they should not be in the relationship. You will find loads of people upset that their spouse came out as asexual and started withholding sex, and they feel powerless to solve the issue. You will also find loads of people upset that their partner belittles and cajoles them into reluctant sex framed like a duty owed in a relationship. And these people do have the institutional power in our society. People who do not desire sex for any reason need to be empowered to refuse it and not feel like consenting to it is the only option to deserve love. Especially since that has incredibly troubling implications when it comes to queer women who often have terrible stories of being treated as selfish for not offering sex to men and having the gall to believe that their attractions should be important. Incidentally, lesbians get attacked this way too on OkCupid. None of the people in that conversation seem to understand that I was open to friendships of any gender, or that women are looking for women on the site for many reasons. Everything was many men men deserve this and the other, and I'm surely only there to frustrate and hurt men and perhaps steal their wine money, but newsflash, women are allowed to use the site and feel no obligation to respond to whatever male attention they don't find satisfying. For lesbians, who use the site and are looking for romance and sex, that becomes a problem unless they entirely hide their profiles from straight people. They can get pestered for sex or even fairly respectfully hit on by men who don't realize they aren't looking for men, and then they can get treated like the same kind of ridiculous false advertisement on the site that I get. And again, even if they're straight women looking for heterosexual partnerships of the romantic and sexual variety, they might not like certain men for whatever reason. They can dislike their picture, their approach, their age, even something like whether they have kids or what their perspective is on politics. Ask any straight woman who has been active on the site for more than a couple weeks. Nearly every woman there has gotten abusive messages if we've ever said no for any reason. So let's not kid ourselves that this is about being salty over me looking for friendship. I could and would get harassed by entitled people, regardless of the source of my disinterest, and that certainly would not go away if I was open to some sort of romantic or sexual partnership. And lastly, all this hilarious stuff about how I ought to just go do something productive instead of making friends, like adopting a dog or a child. Okay, so, A, exactly how much of my time do you believe I spend on OkCupid? Okay I have a profile there, and sometimes people write to me because of it. I then might converse with them. It's not even something I do every week, much less the major focus of my life. And B, let's be honest here, you have no idea what productive things I've done. It's so easy to simply assume that an action you don't approve of defines and dominates another person's life, and that they ought to be shamed into adopting someone, I guess to justify their existence. But like, the most absurd thing about this is that they know they haven't looked into what I do with my time. They haven't evaluated my hobbies or my life's work. And they know they haven't. But they feel no qualms at all about shaming me for what I surely don't do. They think it makes sense that a woman like me is just utterly useless and spends all of her waking hours bilking poor men out of their money or something. But it would make no difference for me to trot out all the books I've written, awards I've won for literary accomplishments, activism I've organized and participated in, 
reviews and commentaries I've produced, music I've recorded, art I've created, and ongoing comics I draw, resources for cooking and baking I've made, sites and blogs I run, and last but not least, all the time and effort I put into my social life and very occasional relaxation, you know, in addition to having a full-time job. It doesn't matter that I've done all that stuff or am both very busy and very accomplished. I'm a woman, and I'm not having sex with a dude. If I'm not doing that, I have failed. And even winning awards or being at the top of my field in a field they respect wouldn't undo that sin. They don't need to know what I've done with my life, because accomplishments and productivity and respectable endeavors are not actually what earns their respect, even though they often pretend it would. I don't know my place, and I made their dick angry. The truth isn't important. Pretending to demand respectability from me helps convince others, and maybe themselves, that such things matter to them, but we all know it doesn't, or they'd research or ask. People whose opinion of me actually is based on whether I accomplish things or produce things need to do so little research to find out the kind of mind-boggling amount of shit I've done. Of course, some of it is stuff they aren't interested in, so I'm sure they'd shame me for that, too. What's funny is, if I did do exactly what they expected, they would not respect me at that point either. Good women who make themselves available to men without making the whole thing inconvenient with their own standards aren't people to them anyway. A man who rages because I'm not clam clamoring to get in between my legs like a good girl is pretty likely to have some pretty back words ideas about how our relationship balance should work and what sorts of personal fulfillment I'd be permitted to pursue outside of satisfying them sexually and raising our kids. It all goes together, especially when you're talking to people who make cringy usernames indicating they think they have to campaign for men's rights because the world is no longer fair for them now that we aren't necessarily forced by circumstance to attach ourselves to them and they're being pressured by the PC police to treat us like we're people or something. I mean, you guys are the ones who wanted to reframe the experience of my male friends as if I'm taking advantage of them. You're the ones who think you're entitled to speak on all men's behalf. Is it any wonder that I'm going to start believing people who do that all subscribe to this group of beliefs that they seem so proud of and defensive of? So if I sound like I'm making assumptions, I am. I'm making assumptions because you told me to. You told me men you don't know feel a certain way and are being hurt and used by me. And even though you have no clue what we do together, all you know is... I read a letter from a man who had to insult me because my profile expressed disinterest in the type of relationship he wanted, and you related to him, not to me. To the entitled, childish, rude person who should have just ignored me if he didn't want me and I didn't want him. And if you choose to shame women on the internet whose crime is being fulfilled with any, without any attention from you, how come I don't get to judge your entire persona on what you choose to do with your time? Can I assume that since you spam strangers for not dating how you want them to, that's the definitive aspect of your identity and you don't do anything else? I mean, you seem like a pretty mean-spirited and bitter group of gentlemen, but even despite that, I haven't said a word about what I think the rest of your life is like, whether you're satisfied in your relationships, whether you do anything productive, whether your pursuits are respectable enough to satisfy my standards. I don't do that. You know why? because I don't give a shit about how you live your life, as long as you just leave me to live mine. You should really just calm down about women who don't like you and focus on something that's actually worthwhile. I think I've said quite enough, and now I'm gonna go to bed, because I have work in the morning. I'll see y'all next time.